Hey guys, it's Unders. Today's Logic Pro tutorial is quite a simple one. It was a question that was thrown at me and it's how you, you can automate the tempo inside Logic. And it's not directly obvious. So we're just gonna have a look at how we could do that. Now, why would you want to alternate the tempo? Sometimes you might wanna have a tempo change in the song or if you're writing say an orchestral piece, that can ebb and flow quite a lot in terms of tempo. It doesn't normally apply with the EDM tunes. They'll tend to have a fixed 4-4 and a fixed tempo, but it's music. You can be creative as you like and do as you wish. So I've got this uh, beat here that's purely a Logic project. And what we'll do, we'll just take the end of the first verse here and go into the chorus and we'll make the chorus slow down. So initially it sounds like this. So we'll shorten that off so it's just got like four of us before we go in there. And that like vocal pitched bit is where we're gonna look at slowing it down. So if you click right up here, we've got this little thing which is show hide global tracks. You can also hit G to bring that up. And in here we've got this bit which is called tempo. If that doesn't show, there's gonna be like a little plus thing by it. Um, it should in all the new versions of Logic be there by default. And as you can see, it says 100 here and it's Bang in the middle of 100 there. Um, our tempo is 100. Now we can treat this like any other automation line, which is really quite cool. So we can keep it exactly where it is on the 100. So we've dropped it to 99 there. Look. And we can quite simply automate it to what we want it to be. We could delete that. So it's going to go right in along at 100. And then here we're going to drop down to 90. And we should see now that while we're over this section, our tempo reads out at 90. And if we're to play our loop, And that is how we automate the tempo of a project inside Logic. To get rid of it again, we just hit G and it's gonna hide it away for us. Um, there's some other useful things available to you in the global tracks and you've got your arrangement markers. You can also change your track signature as well. I tend to just leave it on C major most of the time and I'll uh, normally like label my channels what kind of key we're working in. Although in this case, I haven't done that. But I will quite often, you'll see that in my other projects. Um, sometimes it's useful if you've got a key change just to list them up here and you do it in a very similar way. So depending on the section you've got, you can then grab this and change the section. You'll see it changed there, so it now says it's in B minor. Let's get rid of that so I don't confuse myself in the future. There you go, guys. That was a nice quick tutorial and I will see you on the next one.